Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, I want to mainly talk about the long range outlook again, but this time focus more on potential winter storms and when that may be occurring. If you've been keeping track to the channel, I've been talking about a major pattern change that at this point is very likely to occur. Now, with this pattern change, especially with all the warm, moist air that has allowed to infiltrate itself, out ahead of this, there will be character or I guess the dynamics and features that are going to be in play to create a really large winter storm, potentially even several of them around Thanksgiving, most likely a little after and into early December. Now, normally I would not be talking about a winter storm uh, probability or potential that far out. But again, this is to do with a larger pattern change that is in fact pretty likely to happen and there's a lot of likelihood around that so I want to address that but I also will be addressing a little bit of the short range as there will be a larger storm system in the coming week but it will be mainly rain but there could be some nasty severe weather with it so I want to address that as well. So let me start off with the GFS model and I will talk about briefly about this system that I mentioned that will be bringing mainly rain and severe weather. So this will be occurring this upcoming week. So naturally I want to focus on it a little sooner in the video. Do note that this thing, again, as I mentioned, won't really have much snow to it. It's because at this time when this thing will be occurring, there will be record breaking temperature anomalies across much of the United States. And those record breaking anomalies won't be in a cold side, it will be towards the warmth. So there's pretty much no snow that will be coming out of this, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on what perspective you take from it. Uh, there will be probably a little bit of snow in the mountainous areas, depending on where this thing sets up. But at this point, the models, the GFS and European, are both coming in line that this thing will be kind of occurring more or less where you see this currently on this graphic. The timestamp is very far above me in the upper right hand corner. And you can see that this thing, again, could produce some mountain snow. You can see the GFS does show that. But otherwise, it's mainly a rain event. And this spreads rain into Chicago, St. Louis, Kansas City, uh, potentially Des Moines there, North Platte, and then severe weather all the way down into Fort Worth, Dallas, Houston, uh, maybe even to New Orleans there. So this thing's going to be very impactful in terms of the rain and severe weather, not so much in terms of the snowfall. Uh, as it gets into southern Canada and encounters some cold air, there probably will be some snow, but even that looks pretty paltry. And because there is a lack of cold air or just really a barrel clinic zone, um, this system doesn't wrap up into a massive system. It just kind of moves away as a giant almost slug of moisture and it's, it falls apart. So that's why I'm not really dedicating a special video to it. So you can see the GFS with its total accumulated precipitation shows heaviest amounts across central Oklahoma into northern Texas and across Kansas, Missouri, and another swath from kind of Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, and into Michigan and into southeastern Canada. So before talking about these winter storms, I briefly want to show you the Europeans' perspective on this upcoming non-winter storm. And again, it begins its journey with a cutoff low across California, Nevada, Utah, and into portions of Arizona. As it moves towards the west, it gets kind of scurried along with this reinforcing shot of cooler air in another system that allows it to develop into a larger storm. So notice that that first little wave pushes out into the plains, mainly scattered showers. The European has been more aggressive with this little guy uh, as opposed to the GFS. That could be bringing already some thunderstorms and rain as early as Tuesday and Monday across the central area of the United States there. Um, so stay tuned to your local forecast for details about that as the long range models typically don't do a good job with that exact placement. But notice that as I put this forward towards again Wednesday, Thursday time frame when the GFS showed that massive system, we see an explosive uh, potential severe weather event, uh, just at least at the very minimum, a lot of thunderstorms across Missouri, Oklahoma, te uh, Kansas, Texas, and this spreads further eastward. Again, just like the GFS, not much know with this there will be some across Colorado and Wyoming and it does develop a pretty nice looking system right you would think that this is has more potential to develop into a larger profound system uh, that is more capable of producing large snowfall amounts or even large wind fields but again because there's lack of a cold air mass to the north it fails to do so and you can see at first it looks impressive with that warm front that cold front warm fronts over here um, and again snow across the mountainous areas but as I put this forward you can see that it uh, does bring a lot of precipitation to very similar areas that the GFS model showed but again kind of lacking in that snowfall it does show a little bit more for potentially Quebec and as it gets towards eastern Canada but um, we'll have to wait and see which model 
it does a better job with that. Taking a look at the total accumulated precipitation from the European, pretty similar to what the GFS shows, a little bit heavier amounts according to the European, and you can see it extends anywhere in that purple that's above two inches of rain, rainfall. So for November standards, that would be a lot, a lot of rain. So now I wanna start talking about the exciting part that everyone's looking forward to, or at least probably most likely if you're watching this channel. Um, so after we see this winter storm, not a winter storm, after we see the system that fails to be a winter storm, what we see is a uh, not a drastic uh, pattern change immediately. It actually takes a while for that to happen. We keep going forward into time. This is now Saturday, Sunday. This is the week of Thanksgiving now into Monday, November 24th, 23rd. Remarkably quiet across the country, uh, at least according to the GFS. This is around 200 hours out, so at this point it should be fairly um, starting to fall in line with what may actually happen. I'll show you the European just uh, in just a second here, of course. But do notice that we do eventually see a push of cold air coming in from the northwest as it kind of builds there. I made a whole video explaining why this happens. Uh, there's going to be a ridge that develops across the northern Pacific Ocean, pretty much driving a lot of this cold air down into the United States, forcing it here. And do note that with this system, at first it looks pretty measly, right? But again, as I was saying, around that late Thanksgiving time frame, maybe a little past, we see one of our first winter storm potentials. Now, the models have been going back and forth on all of these, uh, and sometimes they kind of fall in more in line with a colder scenario, with a bigger storm, and then sometimes a lesser scenario. Based on what the long-range models and the Climate Prediction Center says, if there is going to be a most likely, you know, a really big pattern change with a lot of cold air, that favors a possibility for a wound up tight system. And you'll see what I mean by that. So at first, you could see we have a lot of cold air. And again, I made a video about this and I just want to address this again. The, the cold here will be really profound, really cold, potentially records being broken around late November, December, essentially a polar vortex outbreak early on in the winter. And with that, we still have, again, a lot of moisture, a lot of warm air that has not been, I guess, if you will, scurried out from the United States with any big system as the one that we are going to be seeing earlier on fails to meaningfully produce any cold front behind it that uh, wicks away moisture. So there's going to be a lot of moisture in this area, potentially, again, at record amounts. We see a record cool down, a record polar vortex, potentially. So you see the potential for a record system. And notice that at first, again, potentially large amounts of snow or a large swath of snow across the northern plains into the Midwest. Um, again, normally I would not be addressing a system that is almost 300 hours out. And I don't think or necessarily foresee a system playing exactly out like what the GFS shows. This is just to simulate what may happen. And the, I'll show you the European in just a second with its perspective on this system. And you can see the GFS ends up producing a lot of snow, the first potential major winter storm of the year. Again, this would be Friday of Thanksgiving week, so Black Friday, Thanksgiving, uh, potentially white Thanksgiving for many areas here across the northern Midwest. And this thing moves up and develops into a pretty sized uh, system. Unlike the one we saw earlier with that lack of cold air, it fails to really wrap up and just kind of falls apart. This one you could see maintains its strength and actually intensifies. Now this isn't it. This isn't all that the models show. You can see the GFS potentially shows yet another system moving in in the long range outlook here uh, with potential more snow, more rain, further south, and again with potentially record breaking cold air. And again, where the storm lines up, where there will be snow, I'm not sure about that. I just want to show you that the long range models are hinting at this. But what I am confident about is the two meter temperature anomalies being very, very below average, meaning a lot, a lot of cold. And if you look at some of these colors and compare it to the chart here, the key on the side, this essentially shows values that are approaching pretty much the limit of what this shows. This would be bringing record cold. And again, with record warm temperatures on the southern side of this, this could spell the recipe for extremely large monster sized snowstorms. Now let's take a look at the European model. So again, starting off with this system that we are going to be seeing during this middle part of the week. Behind it, immediately, there isn't a major pattern change. The European also shows kind of more of just a little bit of cool towards the north, a little bit warm towards the south, just intuitive behavior that you'd see this time of the year. Um, do note, though, that the European does potentially protrude a little bit more cold air out ahead of the main cool down into Monday and Tuesday of Thanksgiving week. So we'll see if there may be some sort of system that tries spiraling, spiraling into a larger system across the northeast. But more 
in line with what the GFS is showing, we see that cold push of air somewhere around that Thanksgiving time frame, late Thanksgiving week. And you can see, unlike the GFS, which showed a system already occurring at this point, the European doesn't. So does that disqualify the whole thesis? No, because again, this isn't about a single system and a single time frame. It's more about the potential for these large systems and around this general time frame. So whether or not this is a few days ahead or behind, it remains to be seen because if I play this forward, you could see the European certainly does show a system eventually take place. Again, also one that has potentially really strong winds, uh, potentially a blizzard wherever this would occur. Uh, and that th this would be a setup you would see with a blizzard. You have really cold air coming in, really warm air, and that just causes these systems. That's essentially like uh, for a fungus and mold, wet and warm environment, this is the, the dream zone for a system. You have cold towards the north, record cold towards the north, record cold towards, towards the south, you see a little bit of a low pressure, it's bound to explode into a cyclone of massive proportions. And this is what the models are kind of showing and hinting. And with more moisture streaming off the Pacific, this could give way to even larger systems further on as this cold air settles further and further south. So just a very, very exciting time frame coming up. And especially for the holidays, I feel like there's always been, uh, especially the last few years, a lack of cold and snow around December. It always seemed to have come in January and February, which... For a snow lover like me, it's better than nothing, but I feel like snow and cold around holidays is always a little bit more magical. So maybe we will be finally seeing that this year. Um, and we, yeah, we will be definitely keeping an eye on this, keeping track on all of this stuff. And I will be also making more updates on that system that will be kind of out ahead of this major pattern change this upcoming week. That won't be necessarily as exciting for winter weather lovers, but will still potentially deliver quite a punch in terms of impactful weather. So that is basically it for today. I just wanted to give you a quick little update, and I'll catch you all on the next episode. See y'all. Bye.